Hello, welcome back to the next session, Quest Zero on Rayleigh method. In this session, we'll discuss a numerical wherein there is a simply supported beam on which a uniformly distributed load of P naught Newton per meter is acting. The length of the beam is capital L. We need to find the deflection of this simply supported beam. The steps remain the same. The very first step is to formulate the potential energy functional solution. Potential energy functional potential energy functional is given by pi equals S E plus WP wherein strain energy and the work potential. So for beams we have been studying the strain energy is given by the equation E i by 2 0 to L which is the domain over the entire length when you consider a small element dx in the given numerical and the dou square u by dou x square whole square. Okay. What will be the work potential? Work potential is given by since it is an uniformly distributed load acting on the body negative integral 0 to L the load that is acting is P0 over small elemental length dx and it causes a deflection of y. So, 0 to L P0 y dx. Therefore, the potential energy becomes therefore pi will be equal to E i over 2 0 to L dou square u by dou x square whole square dx minus integral 0 to L p naught y dx. So, this is the potential energy function. Let us call this as equation 1. Okay. Now, we'll, we need to assume an approximate displacement function. So, in order to assume this approximate displacement function, as, I, as we discussed in the previous session, the trigonometric assumptions, they give uh, a more accurate result or a more better uh, adjustment to the solution. So, hence, we'll assume the approximate displacement function to be trigonometric. Let the approximate displacement function B. Displacement function B. The displacement or deflection in the beam case. So, Y is nothing but U and it is equal to we are assuming a trigonometric displacement function hence a sin pi x by l we can go further with a1 sin 3 pi x by l and stuff but in order to make the computational effort a little easier we will stick to the very first term in the series let me call this as equation 2 now Applying the boundary conditions, we need to verify if it satisfies the boundary conditions. So, applying the boundary condition, what are the boundary conditions that we have for this? At x equals 0, y or u is 0 the displacement at the left end where 
the support is present, displacement is 0. Does it satisfy our assumption? If we substitute x 0, so sin into pi 0, it is 0. So, u becomes 0. So, this is satisfied. And there is one more boundary condition that is at x equals l, u is equal to 0. So, at x equals l, which is on the right support, displacement is 0. So, our assumption when you substitute x equals l, pi into l by l, sin pi is 0. So, u becomes 0. So, whatever assumption that we have made, it is proper. So, we will proceed further. So, the assumed displacement function, so the assumed displacement function satisfies satisfies the boundary conditions satisfies the boundary conditions now if you observe equation 1 we need dou square u by dou x square and we need y. y is nothing but u. So, already we have a value which is ready to be substituted for y. We need to find a value, the value to substitute for dou square u by dou x square. And so, what we do is differentiating equation 2 twice with respect to x partially will yield us dou square u by dou x square. So, differentiating differentiating equation 2 twice. So, if you differentiate it first, it will be dou u by dou x which is nothing but a cos pi x by L multiplied by pi by L. differentiating this function again, it will be dou square u by dou x square, which is nothing but minus a sin pi x by L multiplied by pi by L whole square. Let me call this as equation 3. So, substituting the values from equation 3 and 2 in equation 1, substituting values from equation 2 and 3 in equation 1, in equation 1, so, we get pi equals e i by 2, 0 to L. What is dou square u by dou x square? Minus a sin pi x by L multiplied by pi L whole square. This entire term squared into dx minus 0 to L integral P naught, what is u or y? A sin pi x by L. A sin pi x by L into dx. So, we need to simplify this further in order to obtain a proper So, when I simplify it further, becomes pi equals e i by 2 a square and pi by L to the power of 4 
I'll take all the terms outside the integral since they are all constants. Integral 0 to L sin square pi x over L into dx minus P naught A 0 to L sin pi x by L dx. Now to overcome the difficulty, we convert this sin square pi x over L to a form that is very easier to integrate. This is nothing but E i by 2 A square pi by L to the power of 4 integral 0 to L. Now convert this into a form that is easier to integrate which is nothing but what we did in the previous session half 1 minus cos 2 pi x over L dx minus p naught a integral 0 to L sin pi x over L into dx. Now taking half outside and integrating the term that is present inside the brackets, we will obtain E i by 2 a square pi by L to the power of 4 okay half taken outside then integration is x minus sin 2 pi x over l entire thing over 2 pi by l and this we need to apply limits from 0 to l minus p naught a integral of sin pi x over l is minus cos pi x over l divided by pi over l limits 0 to l. So, applying the limits we will obtain pi as e i over 2 or it's okay. I will. We could actually multiply two and two. To make this e i over four a square pi by l to the power of four. This becomes up applying the upper limit l minus sine two pi. L l gets cancelled, so sine two pi, which is zero. We will be left with L minus 0 minus 0. So, there is no term to be added further. Minus P naught A into. So, if you substitute L initially, it will become pi into L by L. So, cos pi is minus 1. So, it becomes plus 1. And then plus 1, this pi by L remains. So, it will be L by pi plus L by pi minus applying the lower limit minus of minus it will become plus cos 0 is 1. So, it will be 2 pi over L sorry 2 L over pi 2 L over pi fine. I will rewrite the equation again pi is equal to e i over 4 a square pi by l to the power of 4 into l minus p naught a 2 l over pi. Okay. This is the final equation for the potential energy functional. So, the very last step is to minimizing the potential energy functional. Minimizing potential energy functional 
potential energy functional so when we minimize this it will be dou pi by the variable a dou a is equal to 0 so which is nothing but if we integrate this ei by 4 2a I would write this as pi to the power of 4 by L cube, LL gets cancelled, minus P naught 2L over pi is equal to 0. The 2, 2 gets cancelled, it will be EI by 2 pi to the power of 4 by L to the power of 3 multiplied by A is equals to 2 P naught L over pi. So, simplifying it further, you will get the value of A as 2 to 4 P naught L to the power of 4, the entire thing divided by pi to the power of 5 E into I. So, this is the value of a that we get. We need to find the deflection. So, substituting value of A in equation 2, which is u equals A sin pi x by L. It becomes u equals substituting for A 4 p naught l to the power of 4 divided by pi to the power of 5 e i into sin pi x over l. So, this is the equation for the displacement. Maximum displacement it occurs at the center. So, maximum displacement, maximum displacement occurs at x equals l by 2 or l over 2. So, when you substitute the x values l over 2, you will get y equals u equals y max and it will be equal to 4 p naught l to the power of 4 divided by pi to the power of 5 e i sin pi by 2 it will become so it will be 1 which is nothing but when you make the substitution and do the calculation for pi to the power of 5 divided by 4 you will get it as p naught l to the power of 4 divided by 76.505 ei which is in the regular form that we know. So, this completes a simple solution for a beam which is supported on either end which is called a simply supported beams and it is subjected to an uniformly distributed load. In the next session we will take up cantilever beam subjected to a point load and after that we will end the sessions on Rayleigh Ritz method by taking a cantilever beam subjected to uniformly distributed load. Thank you.